Hi, uh, my name is uh, Frank Mascara and uh, I'm a, a neuropsychologist and a, a researcher at the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. Uh, and I'd just like to thank um, Rachel and Ingrid for uh, inviting me to do this Q&A uh, for you. Uh, so I've, I've got expertise as a, a psychologist and also uh, a researcher in parent mental health, particularly in the areas of uh, uh, within the uh, paediatric hospital context. So I have worked with parents uh, that have children with cardiac disease and uh, one of the main projects I've worked on was the Take a Breath project, which really looked at long-term mental health um, issues in, in parents uh, uh, and also looked at the development and evaluation of the Take a Breath uh, program and intervention for uh, parents. So I've uh, got a whole heap of questions that you've all given me um, uh, through uh, Facebook, I think. And uh, I'm going to try and answer as many of them as I can. Uh, Rachel's divided them up into different topics and sections, so we'll have a few different videos. Um, and I'm going to answer as many questions as I can. Not all of, I won't be able to answer all of them just because of time, but also because some of the questions don't really fall into my area of expertise. But I'll answer as many of them as I can, and you can always get in touch with me uh, later on if you want any more information. So in terms of the first area, uh, or uh, the first theme in terms of the question, this was more around uh, therapy, therapy for parents and therapy for, for children. And um, in, in terms of, of parents, one question is looking at, uh, or ask at which point in time does it, does it appear most valuable for parents to have some form of uh, therapy um, and they also they also suggest that it, it can be hard to answer because there's uh, everyone is different and everyone's got individual needs so I'd, I would definitely agree with that um, however what, what a lot of the research is showing that uh, getting uh, mental health support really early in the acute stages perhaps is, is not a, a great idea and, and may not be all that helpful particularly if as parents you're um, uh, suffering from um, some acute stress reactions, um, having that diagnosis of cardiac disease, particularly um, for new parents, can be highly distressing. Um, and most of the time, parents are busy trying to understand all the, the medical implications and the needs of their child. And um, uh, perhaps they, they haven't got as much uh, headspace or capacity to really think about and focus on their own mental health and, and perhaps therapy in that really early stage might, may not be all that effective. Um, having said that, um, prevention is, is much better, catching it earlier is, is much better than waiting uh, until these problems become more chronic. Um, and ingrained, so um, addressing any mental health concerns um, as soon as you feel uh, that is an issue, then um, that is also um, highly uh, recommended. Um, so in the in the really acute early stages, psychological first aid is is really important, and the hospitals, the social workers, uh, nurses do that really well uh, on the wards. Um, but what we, what we find is as, as time progresses, uh, the research is, is showing that uh, the majority of families actually do cope fairly well. Um, you get a, a smaller subgroup of, of families that tend to be at, at risk of, of longer term mental health issues. Uh, and that's, that's a group that is um, really uh, perfectly placed to get some early um, mental health support to prevent the development of long-term mental health issues. And then you get a, a much smaller proportion that perhaps come in with uh, mental health concerns before um, the, the diagnosis or the medical issues arise and they can have quite heightened mental health issues in the long term. So getting professional help and support is highly recommended obviously for, for those families. So. Don't get help too early, but, but certainly don't wait too long until those symptoms become um, uh, 
are so ingrained that it becomes a bit more challenging to, to cope and to deal with it. Um, what are some, some other questions? So there's a lot of questions on um, what sort of therapies um, are adults or, or parents responding to and again that's a tricky question because the type of therapy that people re respond to um, is highly individualized as well so you know there's the traditional cognitive behavioral therapy which the majority of psychologists and therapists um, do uh, but then there's also there's other types counseling sometimes is enough getting just being able to talk uh, to someone to get some support can be enough there's also other, other types of therapy such as acceptance and commitment therapy which is what we use in our program which takes a, a slightly different approach to CBT uh, and, and the different types of therapy and there's, there's other therapies that are specifically targeting uh, post-traumatic stress as well um, but it really just depends on um, what works for you and certainly if you do go and see someone a professional and you don't feel like it's very helpful then perhaps seek out some some other professionals who take some different approaches because that might work better for you uh, in in terms of, of children um, so what types of therapies work for children so I don't consider myself to be a child therapist um, but but again there's um, lots of different therapies that children uh, are responding to, very similar to, to, to adults in, in many ways, um, but they take a, a, a different approach. So cognitive behavior therapy, acceptance commitment therapy, mindfulness-based therapies are all uh, uh, very helpful. Um, one, one place that um, the Phoenix Institute is um, an institute which is um, really highly regarded across Australia in terms of their capacity to, or their research in post-traumatic stress. So that would be a, a, a good institute to have a look um, at, uh, to check their website out, just to, to see if they've got any other particular evidence-based approaches or therapies that, that can be helpful for you. Um, at what age is uh, good uh, for therapy to start with children? So again, this again is highly individualized. So some children have the capacity to, to really understand more abstract concepts and they can uh, they respond quite well to therapy and other children might find that a little bit more difficult. So I suppose just finding the right therapist and, and working out if um, taking a therapeutic approach at such a young age is helpful. Um, having said that, um, therapy for young children often involves support for parents. So finding um, a, a good therapist or psychology that provides good support for parents uh, is the most important step in supporting your children with regards to their mental health um, issues. Uh, is there follow-up therapy offered once children or teenagers or adults go, get back to re regular life? So that's tricky. Um, again, it depends on the, 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 the hospital or, or the, the, the service that you, you come from. Some services and hospitals offer psychological support uh, in the early stages and, and in the longer term stages for uh, the patients that are seen there and some hospitals don't so it's certainly good to check with your hospital um, and your service to see if they do offer therapy and support otherwise um, uh, there, there's certainly um, uh, sessions that you can get that are, uh, are rebated through medicare you can get medicare rebates for um, sessions with psychologists uh, and, and again um, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, factors such as um, how old the child is uh, and um, perhaps the type of, of patient that they are because there might be some um, charities or some organisations that offer free uh, therapy depending on uh, who you are and what your concerns are uh, and perhaps what your age is. Uh, but I might talk a little bit about that uh, later. Um, there's another question in terms of 
uh, well, in, in terms of if you can't afford decent mental health care, um, really it, it depends, on, again, it depends on the type of, uh, the, the, uh, the type of uh, person that you are. So if you're a child or if you're an adult, that could, uh, depend, uh, that could vary in terms of what services are, are available. So, for example, there's a, a really wonderful uh, organisation called the Gidget Foundation that uh, provides 10 free sessions for new parents. So parents that are about to have babies or that have just got newborns. And uh, for those types of parents, the, the Gidget Foundations provide, uh, provides free mental health uh, sessions, 10 psychologist sessions. They can do it over the phone as well if you're rural or interstate. Uh, so it's, it's worth certainly investigating what different organisations are out there and what they provide because there's certainly a lot more awareness out there in terms of the impact that, that this has on parents and on children and there's a lot more organisations out there trying to support families. Um, and finally in this section there is uh, a question about the difference between a clinical psychologist and a neuropsychologist. Um, and traditionally a clinical psychologist is uh, you know the traditional psychologist that will support you with uh, mental health issues and concerns with depression anxiety symptoms of post-traumatic stress and although um, a neuropsychologist can support you with this traditionally they um, uh, can help with assessment so typically patients get sent to a neuropsychologist if there are concerns regarding um, cognitive functioning, academic progress uh, or any other um, issues with uh, attention or, or memory or, or development that, that are of any concern so the neuropsychologist can help with assessments and providing some strategies um, with how to move forward um, uh, from that point on um, and can help with reintegration back into school if, uh, if that's a concern. So neuropsychologists tend to be more uh, assessment based traditionally uh, and clinical psychologists tend to be the traditional therapists that provide mental health support. Um, so that, that's the, the first general section on therapy and in the next section we'll talk uh, a little bit more about post-traumatic stress.